Oh, hello there. Yes, well, into a new week. Hurrah for that. And uh, I've still got lots of lovely time this week, which is going to be great. Uh, I can stare at the rain, can't I? Yeah. Um, one of the joys, if you like, about keeping a beady eye on Peter Whittle at New Culture Forum is it does give you a neat insight into the kind of generic thinking there is at Tufton Street. So you can kind of tie him in very much to all of the other... <clears throat> independent organisations in that building in terms of where their thinking is. So, you know, a a lot of these kind of organisations are basically kind of jostling around because they are really will want to heavily influence the uh, Conservative Party after the election uh, when Danny Kruger gets to become the new leader. I bet I'm right about that. Anyway, yeah, that's where the money is, isn't it? So um, they, uh, once again yesterday, uh, on their sort of Sunday morning slot, hi, I'm Peter Whittle, um, relaunched his New Culture Forum's 10 Pledges. And I thought it was well worth thinking about these in terms of where the right is going. Um, Nothing about national service, oddly enough. And uh, it was quite amusing yesterday to see the fallout from that when they're having to backpedal it enormously, saying, no, 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 it isn't actually slavery, but we would like people to pick fruit. Yes, not a problem. Get MPs to do it in their first year. There you go. Yeah, you'd never see another word of it ever again if that was actually the case wouldn't you anyway uh, the new culture forum's 10 pledges which have been knocking around for about a year now but i think do give us a neat insight so number one there must be a permanent end to mass immigration the granting of uk residency and citizenship and their associated rights must be provisional for the first five years conditional on compliance with criminal law and passing an english language test and um yes you'll notice a uh, permanent uh, end to mass migration which is a very nebulous term you could define that in almost any way you wanted to but effectively um that isn't going to please business because they don't want those kind of restrictions on who they can bring in uh they like cheap labor that's capitalism there we go and effectively criminal your law well that's basically where we're at now anyway and the english language test is well if you do want to pass a citizenship uh, exam for the uk then that's going to be part of it so not really quite sure about that it sounds great but it's just appealing to xenophobes it's a bit meaningless okay the united kingdom must withdraw from the european convention on human rights and place it with suitable legislation over which it is entirely sovereign in law including over any transnational cooperation which um is totally unworkable Sorry, but that's unworkable. That sounds great, but as I keep pointing out here, um, are we going to veto WTO legislation if we don't like it? Are we going to veto NATO legislation if we don't like it? Are we going to veto anything that we don't like? Well, you can argue that we should do that. But that's a very odd position in international law because we instantaneously, as Israel will be finding out right about now, uh, will get to realise that you kind of have to obey international treaties. You can't just not because then people are a bit horrible to you. Yeah. Um, OK, so we're sovereign in law. But does that mean actually sovereign in law? Or do you mean sovereign as in parliament? In which case, those are two very different things. So this either um, <laughs> gives the right of parliament to just decide whatever they want, or it gives the rights of UK, uh, UK uh, courts to decide whatever they want. But as such, number two is potentially meaningless. Except, of course, it isn't in Peter's and the New Culture Forum and Tufton Street's line. What they mean is they want Parliament to be the ultimate decider of all things, which is great, unless you don't have a majority in Parliament. Say, if you're reduced to a really rump Conservative Party, for example might prove to be problematic, mightn't it? Hmm. The Equality Act 2010 must be abolished, which, again, is is, is that brilliant, oh, that sounds great, doesn't it? Until you actually stop for, you know, point three of a second and think well okay the equalities act um brings together all previous uh equal opportunities acts like uh, the equal pay act from the 70s and the race discrimination act from the 70s um sex discrimination act from the 70s so are we going to lose those um no maybe not eh probably not or maybe we will maybe that's the idea because 
um, you know, whenever right wingers, particularly libertarian right wingers, go on about this stuff, what they mean is we just want to get rid of any of those things that we consider burdensome, burdensome on the people that pay us money. That's basically what that is. And I'm sorry, but if you try selling that to anybody that isn't a white bloke, you're going to have a few problems. Right, here we go. The thorough balanced history of Britain and its achievements must be taught to every pupil in every school to the age of 16. OK, fine. But um, you'll notice the word thorough, whatever that means, balance, whatever that means, Britain achievements. Well, OK, fine. But speaking to somebody, as you well know, that teaches history at GCSE and occasionally A level, it is not compulsory to 16, but it's certainly compulsory to 14. That's what's taught because uh, that's what Michael Gove decided back in 2010. So what they mean is that they want to have the ability to dictate throughout schools in the UK exactly the things that they don't want, which we'll come on to with some of the other ones. That's fine, but once again, um, supposing a party comes to power that has different views to high on Peter Whittle or the rest of them, it might prove to be problematic, eh? Still, you can always appeal to a uh, high... Uh, no, you can't court, can you? Because that will be Parliament, won't it? Hmm. Number five. It must be stated unequivocally there is no blasphemy law in this country that any attempt to establish a de facto one will be actively prevented by the government. Yes, that's a really great idea. Except, of course, that that needs to be across all religions, which will include all of those problematic Christians that jump up and down because, you know, they don't like gay people or trans people or Muslims or anybody. Yeah, whatever it might be. So does that mean that, you know, we won't have any of these people standing outside abortion clinics silently praying? Well, no, of course not, because that act itself won't, won't be enforced. What that means is that they want to bring in laws that will prevent Muslims from jumping up and down about things, which, OK, is fine. But then you've got to apply that across the board. Yeah? Otherwise, you end up with the theological state, which, granted, we do have, with the king being the head of the Church of England and the bishops sitting in the House of Lords. But you'd have to make that very, very explicit. It would have to be Protestantism, which would very much be the basis of the theocratic state. And I'm not entirely sure if people really have thought through exactly what that might mean. Maybe not. Number six, the concepts in law of hate and harmful speech must be scrapped, but promotion of physical intimidation, violence or terrorism must be made illegal, whatever practice, form or context is used, and sanctions strengthened and enforced. Okay, fine. And once again, we get to this notion about, well, we're just going to ban anything that we don't like. We're not going to, we, we hate it when people uh, point out that we're being racist, sexist or transphobic. But um, we are quite happy to jump up and down saying that anyone that holds a banner with a picture of a river or a sea on it must be arrested and interned. OK, fine. But once again, yeah, you know, Peter Whittle et al. Tufton Street will always bang on about individual rights, including the right to protest. Yeah, they're going to decide exactly what you can say in any given context. OK, fine. You're going to have to build an awful lot of barbed wire enclosures in Hampshire to put, to put everyone in, aren't you? Number seven, there must be a complete ban on the teaching as though it were a fact of critical race theory, gender ideology and other associated ideologies in, in schools across the entire curriculum. All school resources must be available to parents as a matter of right, which has just come into operation. But this notion that uh, critical race theory and gender ideology and etc. Et is being taught as fact is in fact simply a lie. It's the same old propaganda as Barbar Black Sheep not being allowed to be sung in schools. You remember that one? Or the fact that teachers can't use the word blackboard or whiteboard because it's racist. Do you remember that? Yes, yes, they were lies as well. So, in other words, it's uh, uh, the other associated ideologies means anything they don't like, like I say, and that will mean mandating at an incredibly micro level exactly what someone like me could say in a classroom. That's going to be interesting in terms of trying to bring that one up in court. Yeah. Good luck with that. Hi, I'm Pete. There must be, number eight, there must be a ban on compulsory attendance at diversity, equity and inclusion and unconscious bias sessions and any associated ideologically driven schemes. Any associated. OK, what about the prevent strategy? That's an ideologically driven scheme. 
can I opt out of that if I don't want to do it? No, it's a requirement of my job. OK, so we'll just get rid of that, will we? OK, then, fine, I won't go to that training. Do I not go to safeguarding training? One might argue that that's a particularly ideologically driven thing because it takes rights away from parents. You see, you really need to think about these things, which, of course, these people don't, because they know what they mean, and they know what their, audi their audience knows what they mean, and then someone like me, the git that I am, comes along and asks awkward questions. Never mind, yeah, there must be recourse for anyone pressured to comply and guarantee of no repercussions for non-attendance. There you go. Fine, I just won't go to this stuff then. OK, and when I get fired, of course, uh, Peter and uh, Toby Young from the Free Speech Union will guarantee me uh, nothing, of course, because it's not their job. It's not what they do, is it? All and any government funding of these must end, of course. There you go. Inevitably using the power of the state. The corporate power of the state, one might think of. Yes, the power from above of the corporate state. What does that remind me of? I don't know. It'll come to me. Number nine, all institutions and quangos, including publicly funded broadcasters, which stray from their core purpose by prioritising ideology, must be challenged and, if necessary, lose any public funding. The equivalent right of shareholders to challenge listed companies must also be upheld. OK, then, fine. Yeah, so um, certain people, once again, you know that this is aimed at the BBC primarily and it'll also be aimed at Channel 4 it'll be aimed at the last vestiges of independent journalism that we have in the country yeah uh, the equivalent right of shareholders to challenge listed companies must also be upheld good I'd be all in favour of that but whenever people do actually go along to Shell BP or whatever it might be in terms of challenging them they tend to get thrown out by security no you're not going to do that are you Peter it's just not going to Happen. It's just not going to happen. So in other words, we'll just simply defund the BBC because we don't like it. OK, fine. Do that, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just watch GB News the entire time because after all, that's what free speech is all about, isn't it? Just giving us the... The libertarian rights view of the world. And finally, those bodies which instead of promoting Britain, whatever that means, and caring for its history, whatever that means, and heritage, whatever that means, actually undermine it should be replaced by another that does or public funding withdrawn. Yeah, you see, because if you're a member of the National Trust and you don't vote for the Restore, Restore Trust people who are proper British people and in no way simply funded by dark money out of Tufton Street, then you're a mad person, Yeah. You're a bad person and therefore you'll be have your rights taken away. Because if you can't be responsible enough to vote correctly, then you shouldn't have a vote, should you? And these institutions that are run by committees appointed by people as they see fit, because, you know, charities, etc., will also have the same thing. So, in other words, we will control the narrative in a... <laughs> in a particularly heavy-handed way, using using the boys in blue to ensure that you don't have an opinion. Or if you do have an opinion, you can't express it in any way whatsoever. Now, this is the authoritarian right at play enormously. But this is what will come out of uh, Danny Kruger's new look, new conservatives. It's Liz Truss, but without the lettuce. That's what that is. And we will get all of this stuff and it will, they will use their platform, um, not necessarily on GB News, because it's likely to fold if the owners go for the Telegraph. But this is exactly what you'll get from these people. OK, they will argue vociferously that in order for you to have your democratic rights, they must all be taken away from you. And if you don't like it, then you'll be arrested. OK, that's fair enough, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. Well, we will see some of this stuff come out of the current Conservative Party, because if they are daft enough to just on the, on the fly come out with national service then they will sure as hell will come out with some of this stuff and you can see how easy it is to just blow it out the water because the moment you ask any minor question of these things it just falls apart it's unworkable nonsense and yet these people are the intellectual heirs of that great british tradition of freedom maybe not anyway do have a lovely monday if you can and um if you can't 
I don't know, really. Um, weep in the corner. There we go. Enjoy. <laughs> 